Yeah. Right. Okay. I, I have some slides, basically. <laughs> I didn't expect to talk about this right now, but uh, yeah, but, but I will still do anyway. It's like kind of surprising. Uh, so as I said, uh, as I said, uh, I made a very rough slide to give you some uh, ideas and uh, the challenges we have. Um, some background is that uh, in Google, we kind of uh, develop uh, a lot of uh, 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 internal stats to collect the kernel performances. Traditionally, we implemented the stats that are uh, in the a kernel, uh, uh, in the C group subsystem, and the stats are for the runtime performances uh, for containers, uh, for jobs that are running in the container, and we exported these stats uh, to the user space uh, via the C group file system. Uh, so there's a st the two properties that important is that stats are defined, are defined, are implemented in the kernel. And uh, what they're tightly integrated with the uh, C group subsystem. Um, so the motivation for this problem is that we want to migrate our internal stats implementations uh, into a BPF-based uh, implementations, so then can, so can easily be extended and uh, changed from the user space and allow faster iterations for the stats. Uh, the, there are some high levels uh, ideas to solve the, to do this migration to really implement that. It's pretty simple. We have, have this. Uh, we have, have a two BPF programs, two sets of BPF programs actually. Uh, one is for collection. The, basically, you can think of that uh, tracing program that collect the stats and then put into a map. And then we have another set of uh, programs that uh, extract the data from the map and export it to the user space. This is a high level idea. Uh, let's talk, first we'll talk about the part of the exportation, the data exportation from the uh, kernel to the user space. Uh, uh, one important uh, usage for the, uh, is to have a iterator, BPF iterator program, uh, that to read the data from the map and uh, export it to the user space. Uh, so uh, we need a slight extension to the iter link. So a iter program can uh, can can attach to the target, and then we can create a link to the iter program, and this link uh, is actually parameterized by the C group ID, or C group name, whatever, and then we pin this uh, iter link into the BPL file system, so we can export uh, this uh, data through a, a hierarchical way in the file system. So. Every you and open the permission of the file to be readable by non root users. So anyone could read the file, and when reading the file, the BPF iter program will dump the stats uh, to the users who read it. Uh, this is pretty much a simple design. But however, there's a problem in that design is that uh, because uh, non uh, unprivileged users, non root users, they can create a C groups. Uh, and while they are creating a C group, they still want to be able to read the stats of their C groups. But the BPF syscall is actually restricted to root users. So the non-root users, even if they can create a C group, they cannot create iter links or, or pin the links in the file system because it's a privileged operations. So which means that uh, they have no way to create the BPF-based stats files without the help from a privileged uh, processes or demons. Uh, so just a short illustration is that uh, the, 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 the last two steps, the attaching and the pinning, will require privileges. So the non root users, uh, jobs running in the container, uh, they cannot do this. They will not get the stats files automatically. Uh, so to solve this, uh, some ideas uh, that we already had. The first idea is that uh, we can have a dedicated daemon uh, that to implement maybe a inter uh, service interface, and then when the C group, uh, when they con when the job run when the jobs want to create a C group, they can send a request to the service and to say that hey, I'm creating a C group. Can you uh, pinning attaching and pinning to create this BPL based stats file for me? And then uh, we can we can get the stats by reading the files. Uh, but this idea is not liked by our container runtime team. Uh, the reason is that so we want to add the code in their daemons, and this will add the overhead, and they have to implement this service for them. And the second problem is that uh, the daemons will not be highly available. Uh, it could crash any time. 
which means that it crashes. It means if you can create a C group, but they may not guarantee to have the corresponding stats files. Uh, so that's our two problems and not liked by the container runtime. Just to have some questions. Um, I was just gonna, I was gonna let you get to your next idea, but that's fine. Um, we, we've had the same request as well. And this was also rejected because the, the run, the, the person running the BPF program, this is like a nested environment, right? Like, so in our case, there was nested Docker environments, right? They have, they have Kubernetes running inside Kubernetes for, for whatever reason. Um, and so there, there was really just no way that the team that manages the nested um, instance could talk to the, you know, some root demon. They just, they, they were firewalled. There was no, they didn't want to have anything to do with each other. So, but yeah, keep going. Yeah, yeah. So. Groups, we don't need the uh, permissions, right? So right, you, you don't need, if you just uh, give the right permission to the directory, in the C group directory, and then anyone could uh, create a directory in that um, parent directory, and then that will create a corresponding yeah, C group. so it's creating the C group, but then what about, how does C group uh, manages the permissions when somebody finally like moves the processes around? So, because process is a file, I think you need to like write the PAD or something in there. Um, some implementation details is that uh, when a container is created, our runtime will bind mount a root, uh, will bind mount a C group directory to the to cont inside the container, and then give the right permission to the directory, and then you can whatever you can do whatever inside your mounted uh, C group directory, and then that uh, will give you you can do anything, and the, the we system our system doesn't track whatever you do. Mm -hmm. So it's and if I recall, the C group is a C group FS is a single mount, right? So there is only one instance in the whole right. system. So when you bind mount, you still like all of the containers still see the same C group, right? Like hierarchy. You have a uh, you have a C group namespace, uh, so we'll be do the isolation. Are you using that too? Uh, C group namespacing. Not right now, but <laughs> we will do. <laughs> So, so basically, it already has some isolation in the C group, and then we allow, uh, our goal is to allow the arbitrary, the non users to create the C group, so it has a flexibility to managing their processes running the container in whatever way to, mm -hmm. for the resource okay. control, that's a goal. Yeah, so there's a mismatch between the C group uh, capabilities and the BPF capability right now we provide, basically. That's a problem. So the, this is the general architecture of how this goes, just uh, the job creating the C groups and then asking the privilege daemon to say create the stats for me and then uh, the privilege daemon will do is attach and pinning create the files. Uh, not okay. And, and in the previous slide, uh, it will do loading too or not? Uh, uh, or we can assume that loading is, uh, is done at the boot time. The kernel can do that and then what you do is just uh, really in the kernel. So, but in, our, but in the case that I was mentioning where they have nested pods and dockers and things, they would want to also load programs from the, from the nested thing, right? So, so even that, like, you would, I guess if you were to do this, you'd have to sort of pass the program through to the privilege daemon, and it was, it was sort of a no-go. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. The runtime team doesn't like this idea because they don't want the logic sitting there, and and you don't want to run an extra daemon just because you want to do this dance. In, in this case, it's the security team, right? And they're like, I don't know what we need to do with you guys. And this is the application team over here, like, oh, I want to do some BPF stuff. Right? Okay. Yeah. Like, uh, security always trumps the application team, and goes now. Yes. <laughs> right. You, right. I exactly. <laughs> exactly. So uh, uh, continuing this, we have a second idea, uh, basically. Uh, how about this? If we don't have this daemon, can we actually implement this daemon as a BPO program? So, the, so the, the, the method here is that we can deploy a BPO program uh, which monitors the C group events, like a creation and deletion. Uh, and then the, the program which monitors that will create the stats files uh, uh, once it have uh, monitored, detected the events. So there are need some extensions for, uh, for, this, uh, for this idea, is that we, first we need to have uh, a sleepable trace program points, 
because the operations that you do in your program is to do attaching and pinning this BPF6 course, they will sleepable, they will sleep. So we need to have is a sleepable trace program, a trace point program that monitor the events and then to do the operation. We also need to insert uh, the sleepable trace points uh, for in, inside the C group code, basically to attach to the which will be at the hook at the C group creation and deletion. And we also need to enable uh, link create and BPF pin these calls uh, to allow it for, for allow them for the sleepable trace point BPL pro. Uh, so the, 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 the solution here is like this. We don't have the daemon, but uh, we can deploy a program uh, probably by the kernel at the early boot time which monitors the C group events. And then when it detects the C group creation, the program will create this uh, BPL uh, FS files and it could be readable by the jobs. So we don't have a daemon. So th this, was, this is the same solution we came to, by the way. Um, and we, we also use this, we were also talking about using this for checking signatures as well of those BPF programs. So we can talk about it more, I think, in the... But the so, is also C group related? In, in the in the nested case, yeah. they, it is because they're well. It, no, it's, it's more like creation is pretty much container. It's a Docker multiple creation. Yeah. So yeah. Do, do you need multiple points other than what I was talking about? Because in your case, you only need like C group like create and destroy, right? Uh, yes, basically. But I'm more. thinking that there may be C group migration or other stuff. We also need to monitor, but uh, it's more complicated than just a simple creation uh, deletion. Is it is it because you're trying to restrict the C group stuff they can do, or are you trying to uh, maybe miss this? So so in my case, it's like they want to load a BPF program. Yeah. Right. And so when when they do the load, you want to make sure that they're not doing something with that program that would be sort of outside their bounds of permissions, like. Mm -hmm like reading maps or, or whatever, right? It's certain helper calls, right? It, it's sort of more fine-grained than, than sort of just cat BPF. It's like... Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think we have that thing as well, but that's it's a slightly different. In, in this case, we, we want to have some statistics files appear, mm -hmm. right? So although ideally it would have been the some some unprivileged logic to have, like, uh, do some BPF system calls, it ends up at that policy angle when you want to read maps there. But here it is just like, the only sort of permission issue we ran into when we were doing this was that there is this program that is in the helper, it tries to do a BPF syscall, and this program could be triggered in, an, in, a, in a task context that is an unprivileged context. The helper goes into the same sort of pathway as the syscall like, would normally do, uh, so opt pin and, and that, that, that track. And then I think how I did a check, if you're calling from within a BPF program yeah. that has been loaded from a privileged context, right? you wouldn't do the, uh, the privileged check there I was I was thinking whether we need to do the syscall path from the BPF program, or we could create some helpers that would create links in the kernel. Uh, but I think the syscall is working fine for us now. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, there are some details. Basically, we need to grant permission um, uh, to the syscall helpers uh, because it's called in a tax in a tax context, not from uh, interrupt context. So. When the the permission there's a permission check in the BPF six call that checks the current tasks uh, permission to say am I allowed to uh, create a directory in the file uh, in the directory or something like that uh, so we also need to do some modification in the permission check uh, in the uh, BPF six call some details here but I didn't list it in the slides just to show the high level architecture so just just to like recap the flow a little bit, right, because I was unstructured. There's a BPF program that is attached to a trace point in the kernel, yeah. right? This, pr this trace point can get tri gets triggered by like a, when a process, an unprivileged process yeah, creates yeah, yeah. a C group. Uh, the BPF program then does a syscall, a BPF syscall from within the program itself. And this ends up running, although this is like code that has been loaded by a privileged program, it is running sort of in an unprivileged context in a current, where the current itself is unprivileged. So you can't create directories, you can't do syscalls, and these checks are the ones that have to be modified. In this. Exactly, exactly. So we, that's why we need also need some modification in the permission check here. Uh, this is the second yeah. idea. And uh, how does this interact with uh, C group namespaces? It's an independent issue. Is, is that? Yeah, why? I mean, you, I, I guess you can just map it to uh, like in your BPF file system in a different way, but yeah. Uh, 
this is all the stats file exported through the BPL file system. Uh, so what we uh, what we are planning to do is to bind and mount a subdirectory into the container. Uh, we don't have a namespace for the BPL file system, so it doesn't have the same level of uh, uh, isolation as the BP, uh, the C groups. But here, bind and mount could give us uh, some some level of protection or isolation here. So we, we have different mounts for a BPL file system if you want to, right? Uh, yeah, we can mount multiple times. <laughs> I, I think I maybe missed something. So are you, are you trying to like pull links from privileged into this unprivileged C group? Is that one way to think of it? You can say that. We be, I, what I want to do is actually to uh, allow some unprivileged uh, stuff that to the unprivileged users. For example, creating these files, uh, or these files, I think uh, creating the stats files could be uh, pretty safe to for unprivileged users to read or not so, write. So then, I'm just trying to get my head wrapped around this. So then when you, like, there's a syscall to do that, right, to create the file? Right. And then you're saying you'd have a BPF program run there and do the permissions check? At that point? No, 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 no. Okay, no the, the, I have a program that calls the BPF syscall, but inside the BPF syscall, it has a permission check that's only allowed for privileged users. But at the call side of the BPF syscall, oh. you are in the unprivileged okay. context. So in that way, you need to say that when you permission check, you need to say that, uh, okay, uh, if it's called from a inside the BPL program, and then I want to allow it for unprivileged users. So, so you, you, you're, you're kind of circumventing the syscall permission check by doing a BPF call that then does the syscall. Only if it's called from inside the BPL program, in yeah. the kernel context. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right, I, right, I, right. I get it now. Right, 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 right. So if, if we are going to modify the syscall permission checks to allow special case for BPF, maybe it's cleaner to just do like BPF sys create link, BPF sys opt pin, and like they will reuse the code, but we'll skip the check. No, like there is no actual like syscall, like they will just be calling like sysbpf the way that, uh, if I understand correctly, yeah. the way that uh, syscall BPF program type does, it just calls directly into, it doesn't do syscall, it's, calls into BPF, uh, sees BPF, but it's not a syscall, it's just a function at this point. Yeah, I understand, and but like, checks, I won't we be, still go through this, like, multiplexer yeah. of commands and all this stuff, so like, should we have the dedicated no, helper no switch command? Well, you have like this switch, right? Is it map create? Is it this, no? Oh, in that sense, yes. Yeah. So like, instead of doing this, like, and pretending like we are doing syscall, we, we can like have Wait, every command as a separate uh, thing, and like, it will, potentially work slightly different in BPF context if it's we, called from BPF. I, I think we can no. do some... Re so it's, it, will say, it will save the DMAX only, but mm. big deal. It's, well, well, now that like we are working in like a different security domain, sort of, I don't know, that might be a little bit more straightforward. Just an idea, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But you're basically saying that we don't need to enable all uh, the functionality BPF from there, right? BPF, yes. I remember correctly. It's a Disable on free BPF Yeah, yeah. Mm. No, I mean, but like during the creation, the director, is, like when we yes, do this MK0, like right? inside of it, there is no current wiring. check, right? Uh, no, this is a, no, not in the so, so I know. This, this, part, this part will be fine, right? So yeah, this is fine. This is fine. Yeah, so it's, it's, fine. Only, it's only, it's the only in the syscall.c. In the BPF sys, it's a global scuttle. So it's only, it's only this one, right? Yeah, it's only this one. It's only this one. Only this one. one. And it is a capability check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so that's the one. If you one. But then I bypass these two lines. Yes, then so once you do the, the once yeah. you go in here, yeah, like yeah, here, yeah. here, there is no, 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 there, no right? one going to check that. That all should go through. That works. Yeah. You can bypass right. that. Then you don't have to limit it to like syscall program type, right? Like you can do it from everything like where it kind of makes sense, sleepable context. Yeah, right. So part of the change was actually to extend the syscall helpers to the sleepable trace points. And then you need to insert the trace, sleep trace points into the C group code. And then, uh, to, and then be careful. If you, you want to insert it into a sleepable context, not in an atomic context. Okay. Can you continue or yep. Yeah. 
there are maybe something I want to talk about is related to this idea. Um, there is a uh, notion, it's called demonless container engine in the container world. Um, it's a concept in the container world because that it uh, allows the spawning container, demonless container engine allows spawning containers without the help of previous uh, demons. What we actually do here in the previous slide is that so we delegate the demons uh, uh, operations into a sleeper trace point to do it inside the kernel as a BPO program. So the open question I want to ask you here, maybe is some discussion, possibly putting some discussion is that um, can we do more operations to, de to delegate uh, to the BPF sleeper trace points? This may be helpful for the, uh, for the move of uh, demonless container engines, but that's not the point, uh, the key point for this talk. But What would be the example? Yeah, I was also wondering the same. Can I you, you I don't know. I'm just uh, because this uh, what I did in the last slide reminds me of this notion. Uh, just to, to say, if uh, people who are familiar with this uh, demonless container engines, if they have some ideas, could bring this up, and then probably we can do. But if no, then it should be fine. <laughs> yeah, I think the answer is uh, why not? Uh, yeah, we certainly can. Especially if there will be like sleepable. Uh, events inside the kernel, and there you will do all sorts of stuff like creating directories, loading programs, peeling, etc. But what would be this container management like operations? You will be like killing tasks? Sure, why not? We have a way to send the signal already, so we can't kill stuff. Uh, but yeah, what I, else? I, I don't know yet. I'm just calling out to say if a People have some ideas, could bring this up, and then maybe we can we can do something with a sleeper trace point to accommodate. Yeah, this is not the end of the stuff. Uh, if anyone uh, doesn't, I think the, the main thing to check is like the main thing to look look for is like explain what are the benefits of the demonless container engine, right? Uh, and and that would be that would be a catalyst for figuring out what operations need so, to be done. I could say that it will make the demon for this um, for managing the containers a thing, and it will reduce the pre the required privileges operations uh, less. So, which uh, potentially improve the security in the system, and that's the at least that should be that's something that a demonless container is uh, uh, is uh, talking about. Um, yeah, for better security, potentially better security, I would say. I, I, I maybe I'm just being slow, but I I don't get why how this demon less. But you you have a less operations performed in a privileged contest in user space. And Got it. Okay. Yeah. But the user space has a the unprivileged user space has a larger surface now to interact directly, and that might be a, that's the trade-off there from a security perspective. You have a monolith, a trusted monolith, demon that you that you sort of. Uh, uh, that you know the security properties of and you sort of have some, some guarantees. In the other case, you have these uh, individual user space, these unprivileged bits, but like, I don't know, the, the surface may increase. We have to think about it a little bit more carefully from a security perspective at least. I do see other benefits there, like what mm -hmm. what we know that where, where demons would end up consuming more memory and, and stuff there, right? So uh, security angle, we need to think a little bit more. <laughs> Yeah, this is just a this is just a, a question that I I don't have a clear answer. I just raise this up. Yeah. Okay, I'll go on. Uh, there may be another possibility. Uh, I was just uh, thinking over the last weekend is that things the root problem is the privilege requirement for link create and the pinning. Can we actually enable it for just for unprivileged users? That will solve all the problems because we can have this uh, runtime, container runtime to do this. Uh, but how? Uh, what I'm thinking is that actually, can we implement a fine grained uh, access control list for these BPF Cisco operations? Uh, more specifically, we may. I'm thinking, can we actually to enable these uh, two operations as a per program per operation basis. I say just to grant this uh, link create and uh, object pinning to the C group stats eater and uh, stats eater links. Uh, so we can just have a better control over what the unprivileged users can do. 
And then if we allow these two operations for the non-users, they can do it by themselves. Uh, basically just modify the user space part, not inside the kernel part. Uh, I was thinking, I don't know if this is possible, is that maybe we can implement such a policy engine using LSM BPF to have this fine-grained policy to better control because I do think the, the unpreview BPF schedule is a big hammer. So why, why not to like do full entry? What's the concern? I, I don't know. I think the schedule was there was just uh, uh, for, I'm kind of a very conservative person. I think uh, we should do, allow some operations, but for majority of them should be disabled. I don't know, it's my opinion. Uh, I, I don't know how the upstream community would take this, uh, but I, <laughs> some discussions maybe. I guess like for the, for the BPF uh, file system itself, right? I mean, it has its own dedicated permissions, so potentially yeah, right. you just could allow it. Right, 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 right. It, it, yeah, like right now everything is under this big hammer, like disabled, unprivileged, yeah, you know, and, yeah. but. But the file system has its own permission checks, so it's pretty, uh, but. So, technically you could unmap the content of the file if you have permissions without going with the BPF syscall. If you have permissions on the file with the FT, the FT implements an MMAP operation, right? Mm. So the, it's just the BPF syscall, syscurtle sort of ends up in the middle, adding an extra check, whereas you could get the contents of um, map you, with you, MMAP. Then you need to get the file descriptor. Uh, in order to get the file descriptor, you need to another BPF syscall, get a reference, and get a reference is also part of the BPF syscall. Uh, Can you not just open the file and get the FT like a normal thing? I believe, oh, yeah, okay. you get a reference of basically calling through the BPF syscall. Okay. Yeah. okay. So this was, I, this was the, 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 the forum I had this discussion in. Uh, I'm not going to quote the person, but like, yes, the, we, we thought that you could already MMAP as an unprivileged user if you had permissions on the file. Uh, but yeah. So what we would try to uh, follow all the standard file system style. So if, we, if there is an FD, if you got an FD, you, you like do everything with it. Yeah. So like so here, the only like deviation from this model will be link create because link create itself creates an FD. But I think like uh, the syscuttle is there realistically only because of the well spectrum meltdown stuff, and it makes sense to think realistically only for loading because loading program is what creates all of the security issues. Like if I think on the load, if it, that's the only thing that stays under the, under this is got like everything else potentially can be removed. At least I don't see how, like what harm it will do. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that's, oh, yeah. that's separate. That's, that, that's this admin forever. That should also stay, yeah. Otherwise you can, Read them from I don't know different names, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, I mean the other operations like lookup, update, like objpin. I think all of this is fine, especially like objpin and objget because they go through the file permissions. Like VPFFS has all the normal stuff, so like extra sys control like doesn't buy anything realistically. Link create is interesting because link create is actually attaching. So actually attaching is. Like yeah, you would have you'd got to have an FD of the program to attach it somewhere. So well for iters, Opspin is also sort of attaching, right? But you make you expose the iterator calling into the user space. Yeah, but you need to write permissions there. So that's the yeah. difference. Like so you have file system. So file system doing all of your CL checks already. Whereas link create doesn't have like extra like it's just like final. You only get to have an FD. So um, I just want to mention I have something very similar to this one, have LSM to control who can do this BPF. Like yeah. I'll probably cover that later, but uh, like just uh, I think it's a good idea to, and it could be very powerful in like other, other, other metrics. Scenarios. Okay. Uh, the other thing, um, like, like for, for for example, where we could also 
attach some of the uh, operations to. I mean, like, as you mentioned, like, given there's the file system, you have all the permissions, they should probably be uh, um, independent of the unprivileged sysctl. But if you have other stuff, we could also um, add this somehow under some finer grained lockdown policy, for example, if we wanted to, right? I mean, there's also room for that where you can say, okay, with the given cap setting, you can have this set of applications where you want to grant this, but others not in the same. Yeah. Yeah. Would it be like a finer grained gap or a lockdown? Like a, like a finer grained lockdown thing, right? Like, I mean, similar what we have with the um, right to the to 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 use the space to modify <laughs> to to modify a program code this is also under lockdown right now right but i mean just to just to extend on that idea it would also but, be possible even though but probably not through the lockdown like lockdown but not lockdown <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> Does it create like a, so this is, I, I, I'm not the expert here, so I'm asking people who do some bit of hardware security, I, I'm learning in this area, but can you like use mapped rights in the kernel memory space as an unprivileged user to like do some cache collisions and create a cache based side channel, like a probe flush, a prime probe attack somewhere, or like, or a flush reload, like some one of these cache attacks? Yeah, you can. Well, you I mean, can, of course, like it's arbitrary code, right? Yeah. Like, that's why it's unprivileged, disabled. That's why the syscontrol is there. Yeah. I mean, that's what the... Like, cache is just one of the things, right? So, like, it's the first thing. Like, Spectre V1 is what you're describing. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I, I'm saying, like, if you give map access, like the... Oh, just map access? Yes. Just, just look up updates into map? Correct, yes. Is it, is it, does it take the user into an address space that they wouldn't normally have access to? Uh, now they have sort of right access that uses to that to that location uh, it's not executable so in that sense it's just memory like if you did like a map yeah. with uh, lock you would get exactly the same stuff it's just the region of memory so it's not worth access to the memory device, it's really access to the memory not Warhammer, but like a specter v1 like attack well, no. KSLR is different. <laughs> That's unrelated to that. Like, like you, you need these things to form like an attack uh, and exploit there, right? But it's the same as a map, right? So like you get yeah, you a map with a lock and you get a memory. So, so, so how is it different? Like not related to VPF at all, just like any kind of memory. It's a memory. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is like, they, yeah, I, I, I need to, I need to see where this is allocated. Like, do, do, can you share some light on where this uh, is? It, is it? It's in the, it's in the kernel. It's not in the kernel text section. Right? This is all vmalloc. So it doesn't matter. K malloc or vmalloc. It's memory, right? It's a data memory. It's not executable. So like, it's same stuff as any other memory. So. But you need a BFT, right? And you, you just follow. I'm still, I'm still don't see the concern. Like it's a memory. Like it's there are plenty of ways to get the same memory. So like I don't see how like allow unprivileged like look up update into the map would do anything more than like existing just a map anonymous memory. Same stuff. It's memory. I'm going to give you an answer and I, I try to find out what the person. Okay. So I. But then I, you you would also need your. Uh, BPF program crafted in such a way and uh, have permissions to load that, right? And if you don't, then the only thing you can probably do is like causing cache trashing, but yeah. Okay. Okay, I think we're diverging a lot. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would no, say. I want, to, I want to just mention that uh, I also attempted to have this um, developer patch for M mappable task local storages, partly because of this reason. Uh, but anyway, just to mention. Uh, high level architecture is that uh, we have this policy engine inside the kernel, and then so the job can directly create the SQL files, could read the stats. Uh, simple. We can go back. 
oh, you think this is a third approach instead of the third approach? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a third. Yeah, it's a third approach. If we have like all this the ACL what you John wanted to do, like then you sort of circumvent the privilege and you will give. Not not to circumvent the privileges, but to give a fine control over the uh, privileges. But, uh, this, like. but this is unprivileged, right? Yeah, this is unprivileged. So grant the uh, creating of the files, the privilege mm -hmm. to create the files. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is sort of point. So I present. I think summary. I presented. I proposed uh, three ideas. Uh, the first is a uh, not okay. Have a dedicated daemon. And the second is that using a sleepable trace points, and the third is that so we give uh, we de develop a fine grained uh, policy engines to grant permissions some permissions to the unprivileged users. That's uh, three approaches here. Uh, this is for only for the exporter part. There are another part for the collection part, because the C group, uh, that also needs some work. Uh, is that the C group uh, stats these are often hierarchical. The stats that we collected are often aggregated over the C group subtrace because, uh, for example, you have a job that will, the container engine will create a top level C group, and uh, under this uh, uh, sub root of C group, the uh, jobs could create uh, child C groups to do resource control. But the stats we exported are often aggregated over these uh, child C groups and exported uh, as the top level uh, C groups. Uh, so actually, this is the collection side was worked by uh, my colleague Yusri Ahmed. Uh, 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 he's saying that uh, it's almost code complete, uh, but still testing. Hopefully, get uh, some RFC patches posted in the mailing list soon. Uh, some idea is that uh, the idea for the collection is that uh, we will be extending the R stat. R stat is the infrastructure that is built in the call of uh, C groups for collecting the C group uh, uh, stats. And it's basically a framework, allows the, each controller in the C group uh, to extend. Uh, basically, this defines uh, how do you flush the stats and then how do you uh, aggregate these stats. So we uh, uh, use this idea is that we want to plug in, uh, after discussion with the, um, with the maintainers in the BPF office hours, is that we want to plug in the BPF into our stats. So we will introduce a new program type called the R stat flush, a flusher. The flusher is, a, uh, is a, can attach to a C group subsystem and defines the logic uh, for how to aggregate the stats uh, across CPUs and hierarchies, and then how, uh, how do you uh, do the flushing. Um, I don't have much details uh, until we see uh, user stress RFC patches. Um, yeah, still working, uh, almost code complete, but testing. Uh, the last, the final bits for this work is that uh, the the storage is for these uh, stats. Uh, so currently, we put all the stats in the hash map. This is workable. Hash map is indexed by the C group IDs. It's unique. Uh, so we put the stats there. Uh, but it uh, would be desirable if we can make the C group local storages to be usable uh, in our cases, because uh, we believe that would be probably faster than hash map. What do you mean? Uh, I actually not quite get it. This question was raised by Yosri. I think it's a C group currently, in my understanding, my own understanding is C group local storage used for network right now, only used for network. It's not generically usable by tracing or other program types. I don't know if that's the case. In that case, probably that's Martin, what I mean. Do you know? I think what you're trying to refer here is like why not a C group local storage can only have a one-to-one -one mapping. So um, each program, BPF program can only one use can only use one C group local storage. Um, so at the low time, if the BPF program is associated with uh, a, C, a C group local storage A, for example, it cannot use any other yeah, C group okay. local storage. But Think about socket local storage, right? A BPI program can use more than one, C, uh, one socket local storage. Okay, I think that's... I don't know whether anyone remember that. In an earlier discussion, when we try to extend the current C group local storage, the program and the C group local storage has a one-to-one -one mapping. So that was one of the things brought up. But in task local storage, socket local storage, there's no uh, this limitation. Okay, I think that's... that's, okay. Uh, that's 
I don't know why I the think, C group I goes. Think, I think, I think, I think what, what, what um, when C group local storage is created, is more like a set local storage. Mm -hmm. That's why the, the whole design kind I think, of I think C group local storage was implemented first. Yeah. Right. And right. I forgot why we went well, this way. Like and the, the one there are like two modes. There is C group local storage and there's shared something. And that's how it stayed. But I don't think there is any like fundamental reason why it cannot be right. like task local storage or socket. Yeah, I think you, we can definitely extend the task local storage or socket local storage idea to to the C group also. I mean, essentially, you you have a ponder in the C group data structure, like socket and task already has. So oh right, so it's, it's yeah, doable. that's because we didn't put anything into C group. Okay, yeah. so we, uh, yeah. Okay. Save the point or it creates lots of pain. Good. <laughs> okay, that's the last bit of uh, this pipeline. Um, thank you, everyone. I take uh, a lot of time and uh, generate a lot of discussions. So, uh, One more question. Thank you. So, uh, I just want to ask so, we, we try to convince the C group maintainers to take that directly into C group FS. So, do you think we should try that again? I still think that's gonna simplify a lot of the stuff. I know that maybe the chance is not so so good, but do you think we still give it another try? I, I, I can try, I can try. Uh, but but I, I do think that, as I, as I said, uh, in my own opinion is that the last two approaches, the ACO policy engine and the sleep trace points, both have their pros and cons. Uh, I just want to get your opinion from everyone in the community to say yeah, which one. Is C group local storage performance wise a little bit faster than like uh, other local storages? Because we avoid like uh, searching for, for this. Yeah. So that might be, but we can create another C group local storage, yeah. generic C group. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay, that's all. Um, I recently hit a problem, not exactly C group, but, but it's also uh, about the unprivileged. It's like, so the program used to be working okay. It has, a, it has the BPF and sysadmin privilege. And then, so that daemon is uh, trying to read a map or delete, update, update something or look up something from a map. And then one day that uh, daemon maintainers started using the uh, user namespace, and then, and everything's uh, broke. You cannot even read the map. So is it a particular reason we cannot support user namespace in, in the people church? Chuck, uh. <laughs> yeah, I think so um, far it was mostly paranoia, like security yeah, paranoia. Yeah, it was, it was like mainly, mainly the paranoia. In, in this case, like user NAS doesn't, will not, we cannot, be a different route. Like user NS is still a fake route. Like from everything BPF point of view, oh. even if you're root inside the user NS, you're still unprivileged. You're still just a normal process from like anything BPF related. So that syscatal is the main point, but it's kind of orthogonal to user NS. What did we discuss previously about like, allowing map? What we discussed just, just before, like allowing map up, uh, update and uh, lookups based on FD only without requiring like privileged sysadmin probably would solve that that issue anyway. Because like once you have the map of D, you can just like go and update it, right? With like being unprivileged uh, process. But they, they may not do, they may not only, only do the update the map, right? They may, they may want to create a map or things. And then suddenly they switch the user name space and everything broke, so. It's creating a map and putting it into a map of a map a safe operation to do for like pretty much anyone. Or oh, actually you, you will have a view of the map in the map, right? So you can you can still control that. Okay. Well creating the map probably also should be fine for unprivileged. Like there are there are like other checks there, right? So main thing with creating a map, the main issue is that it's locked, right? So we might need like IPC check for IPC lock stuff, capability, cap IPC, or wait, whichever one is it? Like, but that one. was the, the mem lock, right? Yeah. Like, but that's gone, right? Yes. So now you have to... 
<coughs> anyway, yeah, so map create might be tricky, it's not like directly to untrive, but need to think more like how to make sure that untrivish user cannot DOS the system. So that's the only thing. Like once the map is created, like look up, update, delete all fine. But uh, like map create because of max entries, like or we can do like whatever different max entries, some other limits, but MemCG should really be the answer. Did anyone try to implement policies with the BPF LSM for the BPF syscall itself? I think Robert has a question. So I tried to implement a policy for um, uh, adding a new element uh, to, the, to a map. But um, because when I used the, the BPF map security hook, it was not um, uh, precise. Uh, when you try to do a BPF tool map list, it also tries to get the map uh, write uh, permission. And uh, this was not um, good if you would just want to protect the update. Can you, can, can you repeat what you mean? Like update is the right, so. Uh, so the, when you do the update, you ask for uh, write uh, permission, but um, BPF tool uh, just to iterate over the maps also ask for the write permission. So when I, when I tried to deny the, the write, BPF, BPF tool uh, stopped at the map for which the permission was denied. I don't know, maybe, maybe it could be also a bug or... Yeah, if you have a chance, please follow up with that. I mean, maybe it can be fixed. Yeah. I don't know. In that, in that case, BPF tool, tool probably runs as root, and then you're denying root the permission to read, uh, to like write or some to the map, and then BPF tool sort of there is an iteration that breaks. Like it sees an error when it tries to read that map, and BPF tool assumes so that hey, I should have access. So there's some tooling that needs to be updated to understand that I don't have an access, I have a permission error, I just just, just continue iterating on that. But there's no problem with the LSM hook in particular, right? You were able to implement the policy that prevents updates for a certain map. Oh, yeah. There's Dialogue. I will try to run, but we will get more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, and I understand that uh, BBF tool uh, need uh, the right permission when you do BBF um, uh, tool map uh, update element, but not when you just need to uh, list uh, list the map. So when I it was just listing map uh, BPF tool map list, uh -huh. and I had um, uh, I, I wanted to deny a write, and BPF tool stopped uh, exactly at the map where I denied, uh, and so I didn't continue to to show the other maps after. Yeah, well that's a tooling issue, right? It's not an LSM hook issue. Yeah, it could be, could be, could be that, um, or I don't know, maybe also could be how the BPF map uh, is implemented because uh, it is the one that. Uh, um, generated the permission. Um. I actually think it's a tooling issue. It shouldn't be on mm. the, like the map, it just stops iteration at that map where it sees the access is denied. Mm -hmm. So it, you need to probably add a check that says if error equal to E, e minus E perm continue or something like that, right? Mm. Because it doesn't expect right now by policy that maps will be denied access to while iterating on the maps. Yeah, you should be able just just to to list them. Uh, It'll be good to see the snippet of the code actually when you present yeah. your LSM stuff. It, mm -hmm. It'll be easier. Okay. Yeah. We still have a few minutes. Any more questions or comments? <coughs> All right. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you everyone. Thank you everyone. So break for so we'll do we'll do a break uh, right now so. Uh,
for how long? 